What exactly is sample rate and bit depth? Let me show you this with a simple sine wave. In the real world, this is a continuous wave which has a smooth curve. But in order to represent this sine wave in a digital system, the analog to digital converter measures the state of the sine wave at a fixed interval and assigns them a value. So the system doesn't actually see the wave, but discrete data points spread out over time. The interval at which the system measures the wave is described as the sample rate. So the sample rate is the amount of measurements the system does per second. With a sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz, you have 44,100 measurements per second. And with 48 kilohertz, you have 48,000 measurements per second. Now, what does the system measure at these data points? It actually measures the amplitude of a signal. So the voltage level of a waveform at a particular point. At the peak of the wave, it will measure a higher amplitude and near the zero crossing, it will measure a lower amplitude. Now, the resolution of this measurement is also limited and it can be described with bit depth. With a bit depth of 16 bit, for example, you have 65,536 different states that this value can have. So this is two to the power of 16. But the bit depth doesn't only affect the resolution, but also the dynamic range between the loudest and the quietest points possible. On the top of a digital system, we have a limit of zero dB full scale. A bit depth of 16 bit will provide us with a dynamic range of 96 dB. At around minus 96 dBs, we have a theoretical noise floor, which is basically noise that gets introduced due to the process of quantizing this wave. So this also limits the quietest sounds that we can record until they get masked by this noise floor. Now in a system with a bit depth of 24 bits, we actually have a much higher resolution of two to the power of 24, which equals 16,777,216 possible values and a dynamic range of 144 dBs. Now there's even one more very magical thing, which is called 32-bit floating point. And the floating point basically means that you now have 1,520 dBs of dynamic range. And if something goes above zero dB full scale, you can just dial it down back again in post-production and it doesn't clip. So you basically have unlimited digital headroom. There's actually a reason why most audio files that are used for streaming services or for CDs have a sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz. And the reason can be described with the nyquist shannon sampling theorem. The theorem says that the sample rate must be at least twice the highest frequency of a signal that is being processed. Now, we humans can only hear up to 20 kilohertz, so the sample rate must be at least 40 kilohertz. The reason for that is that if you have a sound wave and you have too few samples, the system will interpret these gaps as much lower waves because it doesn't have enough data to fully replicate the whole waveform. This effect is called aliasing and it can introduce lower waves or even distortion. To prevent this from happening, anti-aliasing filters are being used in digital audio, which basically cut off the high frequencies that you wouldn't hear anyways. Another way to prevent this from happening is to use oversampling. On some plugins, you can activate this. So if you have a sample of 44.1 kilohertz and you activate two times oversampling, internally, the process will get done at 88.2 kilohertz. And after that, it gets sent out again in 44.1 kilohertz. Oversampling is also being used in true peak limiting, which helps you to detect and prevent intersample peaks. Let's say you have a sample very close to zero dB full scale and another sample also very close to zero dB full scale. The system only knows these two measurements and it doesn't know what's actually in between these two samples. The waveform could actually go above zero dB full scale, which will result in distortion. So with oversampling, you will have a more accurate measurement of these peaks. Okay, I think this is enough now for this video. If you want to learn more about mixing, check out this video right here. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching.